Now, timing um, is supremely important for the specialists themselves. And talking about timing takes up another big chunk of the prep meeting. I put my students in a very difficult position. I know this through the specialist role because um, what they don't have is the total control over the content that they would have were they allowed to give a presentation. I take this away from them because I say, no, you have to act as a specialist, not give a monologue. On the other hand, I don't allow them to let complete chaos reign because a debate, that's the nature of a debate. It is chaotic. You never know who's going to say what next and is it going to fit to what just has been said before or is it going to be a widely different area? And they don't control that. They can't. So what I do to them is I make them walk this tightrope in the middle between these two extremes. They can't have a monologue, they can't have chaos. Instead, they need to provide a structured debate or foster that, bring that into being. What that means is there's a lot of things they don't have any control over. That makes it all the more important that they do control very well what they can control, and that is timing. Now, we all know a lesson is 90 minutes long. Um, usually, there is going to be a small task assigned to another class member for this particular lesson, say biographical background. So those would be five minutes talking on the background of a particular author or a particular director. Um, just background information that is useful to know for everybody once we look at the text or film that we're going to look at in a particular lesson. Now, that means of the 90 minutes, five are gone. I also tell my students, look, I am going to need 10 minutes traditionally. I don't know when I'm going to need them and where I'm going to need them, but I do know that things will occur to me. And that means these 10 minutes come off the now 85 that you have. That means plan for 75 minutes. And planning means it's more complex than you think it is because you precisely don't know what's going to happen. So I tell my students, okay, once you've decided on the areas you want to cover, then you come up with the quotations, the images that go with these questions. And then you make up your own questions, the why, the how questions that we talked about earlier on. And then you think, okay, how much time of my 75 minutes do I want to dedicate to this one passage plus question plus quotation plus image? Say, best guess, six minutes. I think in six minutes we will have covered this. And you do this for every single block of quotation question. That's your best guess. This is how I want to spend my 85 minutes, uh, sorry, my 75 minutes. <clears throat> This is what you call your plan A. But then, as we all know, it doesn't always go according to plan. Sometimes we need longer. Things occur to people, things that haven't occurred to the specialists, things that haven't occurred to me. Someone has a wonderful idea and it's just too good not to pursue. That means for the specialist, okay, I want to let that flow. It's going so well. It's, of course, also a question of politeness. It's also a question of immense gratitude that actually someone is contributing some worthwhile ideas. The last thing you want to do is stop them because they might never say anything again. That would be awful. So you let people talk. That means the plan has to change because now you haven't spent six minutes. Now you've spent nine. And the question is, where do you save the three minutes? You've just lost or spent on a worthwhile pursuit. So I tell my students during the prep meeting, think about that. What do you do if you need longer than you had envisaged? What if plan A after 20 minutes is totally out of the window because since then things have exploded, it's going great, but you know you're gonna be in trouble. You were never gonna be able to stick to the original plan. And this is where plan B comes in. I tell my students in your own plan A, identify the weakest points. Which is the quote you can do without? What is the slide you can skip? What is the image that doesn't really have anything totally new to add, that it wouldn't be a catastrophe if you sacrificed it? And you just disappear those. You already make that decision before the class starts. So this is another instance of starting before starting, that you already know in your head, if things take longer than I thought they would, 
slide 13, slide 15 to 17 disappear. I just go click, click in my PowerPoint presentation. Nobody will be any the wiser. No one would even know that I've skipped something. Now, if a specialist is alone, this can be quite a challenge because they have to focus on the group on the questions, and they already have to make a decision in their head when and what to skip, or rather when to skip it, because they already know what. Now, depending on when, if I, if I have a specialist who is alone, who is flying solo, I tell them, look, I'm perfectly okay. I, I stand at the PowerPoint, and if you give me a signal, I'll just double click, that's fine, yeah? or they, are, they have a team, I tell them, communicate with each other beforehand. So if your colleague goes, that's all you need in order to disappear the next slide and it'll be fine. Um, this is extremely useful for training teamwork between different students. Now, plan B is what saves you if you need more time, but the opposite can happen as well. I know it sounds unlikely, but I've seen it. Sometimes a group is totally on fire. Everybody is well prepared. The right answers are flying left and right. And all of a sudden, the specialist is through with the program and we have six minutes left of the class. And the only thing you can't do is saying, I'm done. And look at me with big eyes and say, will you please take over? No. Um, then I tell my students, you need plan C. You need something up your sleeve, an extra image, an extra quotation, an extra passage, and make it a question that is expandable, because not every question is. So if you take a type A question that is relatively simple, you will never fill two minutes with that, no matter how often you ask it. Um, so you need a type B question with various answers, and you need to be able to gather these answers in two minutes, or if you add another image, maybe in seven minutes. And if you have plan A, B and C, nothing can happen to you in terms of timing. There is no way you're going to get in trouble. And that means, although you have no control over the debate, you do have control over how much time you spend on what. And generally speaking, that makes people calm. It frees up operational memory in their brains so they can concentrate on, watch, on the content because they know timing-wise I'm fine.